So, hello everybody and a very warm welcome from the Volkswagen Group overall and specifically from Carriot here at the CES 2023 in Las Vegas. My name is Amin Hamdan and together with a great team of engineers, I'm responsible for the vehicle and cloud platform at Carriot. Today, I will be joined by my friend and colleague Ross Garrett from Carriot US. Very nice to be here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the Volkswagen Automotive Cloud in just a second, but until then, uh, Amon is going to cover our vehicle platform and uh, the, the tech stack. Thank you very much, Ross. So um, today we will be talking about the, the tech stack um, and specifically the software platform that is a very important piece for us for this new auto strategy. <coughs> Why is that? Um, the software um, in the vehicle is changing drastically. It's typically said that about 90% of new features and functionality in the vehicle are driven by software. This trend is further fueled by the emergence of automated driving, by the convergence of consumer electronic devices, online services with the in-vehicle infotainment. We have a very strong push towards electrification. And ultimately, you could say that a vehicle today is no longer just a means of transportation, it is becoming a consumer electronic device by itself. <clears throat> you would rather compare and expect things from your vehicle that you would expect from a mobile phone and less from a bicycle. So the perception and the expectation of our customers is changing and software is what drives this change. So we have to look at different skills and different ways of doing those things um, and we have to empower ourselves to get to uh, understand how to do those things better in future. <clears throat> the traditional way of doing um, software development and doing the system integration doesn't work anymore and doesn't scale. Why is that? If you look at previous development models, we used to buy embedded control units from a number of suppliers. We were bringing them into the vehicles and then we had lengthy integration and test cycles to bring it to the highest level of quality so we can ship it to our customers. Obviously, this approach is limited, and obviously this approach and the speed of development that we have within this approach is no longer sufficient for the software development challenges ahead of us. We have to rethink the way that we build those systems, and we have to do it in a software-first approach. Now, what does it mean? We will move away from uh, the existing um, ECU landscape that we have and integrate the features and functionalities into high-performance compute nodes. So instead of having a plethora of smaller embedded control units, we will bundle all of these functions and put them into highly centralized, highly capable embedded control units. You will see that this obviously changes the problem from an ECU integration challenge to a software integration challenge. Now, I do not say that software integration itself is an easy task, and I don't say it's a walk in the park, right? So there is still lots of things to do but it's obviously the only way to cope with the complexities ahead of us. And software integration, large-scale software integration, is something that you can see there done on a daily basis outside of automotive. And we have to bring this knowledge from outside of automotive into the automotive world to enable us to work more efficiently and faster compared to how we did it in previous generations. One key enabler for doing so for us is the software platform. The software platform will create a stable abstraction for this hardware. It will allow the application stack to be reused um, and it will um, create very complex, uh, it will allow um, applications to build very complex features and functionalities by providing um, a great abstraction to the intrinsics uh, and problems that we have in an embedded world. So you can write applications without understanding all of the in-vehicle communication. You can write applications without understanding all of those details of real-time communication and safety. It will create a great abstraction to allow people who develop features and functions to focus on customer value instead of understanding on how things are done in terms of hardware software integration. So the platform is very important. Those features and functions that we have in vehicles are typically not isolated they typically interact with a number of bits and pieces in the vehicle and often also interact with the back-end functionality. So when we talk about a software platform, this software platform will be an onboard and offboard platform across all bits and pieces in the vehicle, allowing our developers to create complex applications very easily and to iterate quickly. 
now that we have empowered our developers to implement these functions and features very quickly and easily, the question is, how does the distribution channel for them look like? How do they get their functions to the end customers? Therefore, updatability is something that is baked into our platform. It is part of what our platform does. So our platform allows updates on a macro level. So you can do full vehicle updates. You can do updates of subsystems of these vehicles very easily, as well as updates on a micro level, meaning you can update applications or you can update functions in the vehicle as you wish, very quickly and very easily. And one of the technologies that we put in place um, is a containerized application runtime. Similar to what you know from Docker and OCI in the backend world, we will provide an embedded application runtime where developers can bundle their application into isolated execution environments and push them to the vehicles in an instant. So developers can bundle the application. They can decide about which vehicles will get these updates. It goes to the back end and then is pushed to the vehicle fleets very seamlessly for the developers. But it doesn't end there. Our application runtime also provides sophisticated APIs for interacting with the vehicles. So when a developer wants to um, start a certain function in the vehicle, if you want to read data from the vehicle, if you want to connect to online services, all of those things are supported by our containerized application runtime um, in a very powerful and very sophisticated manner. Now, it may sound like science fiction, but it is not. We are working on this technology right now. We are bringing this technology into the fleet this year, and we will be rolling out this function and these features very soon to the rest of the fleet also. So you will have, at one point in time, one of the largest ecosystems and application runtime um, in the vehicle world. We do so not just for ourselves. Uh, we do this in an open manner. We believe in open source, uh, and we contribute to open source. We recently joined the Eclipse Foundation, um, where we will push um, lots of our platform software. So you are um, invited to have a look and to contribute. Uh, we believe in open source. We think open source is a very important piece of this. The more people build on top of a platform, the more people utilize a platform, the better and the stronger the platform is, the bigger and the better the ecosystem is. So we are very open to those things. We do not anticipate the platform to be differentiating, so we are happy um, to share this um, know-how with others. And when we talk about empowering developers, um, it is very important for us um, to do it in a seamless and efficient manner. Now, as I mentioned before, um, all of this um, change leads to a shift um, into this vehicle overall. Just to come back to the initial remarks, the vehicles will no longer be software monoliths, where you have a software that is being deployed once, and then it uh, leaves the factory and it stays as that. Um, vehicles will become moving, changing objects, and the software will be deciding on how this vehicle behaves at that certain point in time. That's the emergence of the so-called software-defined vehicle, where the software defines how this vehicle behaves for a certain customer at a certain point in time, in a certain market, within a certain brand. It's a very powerful metaphor, and it is similar to what you would do today with your mobile phone already. So if I open up the mobile phone of my wife, she has an iPhone, and with her consent, I have a look, I can barely navigate her phone, right? Because the ex experience that she has on her mobile phone is very specific and very much tailored to her, the same way that my mobile phone is um, uh, tailored for me. And the way that my phone looks in six months will be different than to what my phone looks today because it's constantly evolving and changing. And the same thing will happen to the vehicles. It will be software defined. And we here at Carriot driving this change. So it is right now a very interesting, um, very challenging time. And it's great to be a software engineer in automotive. And it's even better to be at Carriot uh, because we are at the core of this transformation for the Volkswagen Group. We're the engine of this change. We are bringing software and sex software expertise um, into the Volkswagen Group overall. And it's just a great wave of change, and it's great to ride it. Now, with this, I will hand over to Ross, who will give you some more insights into the Volkswagen Automotive Cloud and our ecosystem thinking behind it. Awesome. Thank you, Amin. Uh, and thank you again. It's great to be here. It's great to be at CES. Uh, it's great to be here at the, the launch of Carriad North America. Uh, and it's great to represent um, my team in particular, a group of incredibly talented and passionate individuals that together with our colleagues uh, in Europe and uh, in China 
are building Volkswagen's new automotive cloud, uh, or as we like to call it, VWAC. Before I get into some of the specifics of uh, what is the Volkswagen Automotive Cloud, I thought it useful just to take a moment and understand why we're building it in the first place. I think it's fair to say that your vehicle represents perhaps the first or second most expensive purchase in your life. And even though ownership trends are changing over time, one of the things that is definitely consistent and growing uh, is the expectation that buyers now have uh, of, of their vehicles. They want it to be more sophisticated. They want it to be uh, uh, more valuable. They want it to be more integrated into their digital lives. And so these uh, digital experiences are now a key competitive battleground and, and form part of um, the overall uh, experience that customers and buyers now demand. Uh, and and that's, that's really important as we think about what's next uh, in terms of the cloud platform uh, for Volkswagen and the group. These expectations are driving a massive market opportunity, uh, one that uh, McKinsey estimates could be as much as $750 billion. Um, but this opportunity is largely untapped at this point. And it's untapped because automotive today uh, is very much a walled garden, only accessible uh, to those with very specialized skill sets, uh, typically deep pockets, and you have to know a secret handshake. Uh, and, and so this is clearly not going to work uh, in order for us to scale up and deliver the innovation that customers now expect uh, and, and capture the market opportunity in front of us. Um, relatively speaking, the developer pool that we have working in automotive engineering today, software engineering, is incredibly small. We can't possibly reach um, the, the scale that we need to, that customers now expect of us if we keep doing things in the same way. So in order to um, to reach this opportunity. We need to think about opening up. We need to think about partnering um, with this amazing, vibrant ecosystem of partners that are exhibiting here at CES and those of you that are attending and seeing all of the other um, fantastic things. We need to make um, connected vehicles truly um, a, a digital companion, part of our overall uh, digital lives. And that then is what the Volkswagen Auto Automotive Cloud is really all about. The platform itself uh, is uh, certainly building upon um, what Amon described as this software-defined vehicle. That's the center of everything that we do here at Carriot. Uh, but um, being able to connect the power of a software-defined vehicle um, to uh, an ecosystem of developers and partners is really where the cloud platform comes in. The VWAC um, starts with uh, a foundation uh, of an incredibly reliable uh, and, and hugely scalable vehicle connectivity layer um, that now makes it possible for us to serve new use cases um, that are important to customers today. Of course, autonomous driving will be a, uh, a game changer for this market. Um, there are new um, intelligent cockpit uh, solutions um, that we expect. When we think of digital experiences inside the car, we typically think, when we think of digital experiences, we think of them inside the car. And it's more than that. It's connecting to um, partners and other apps and being able to make real-time communications with these other apps and services is really key. So a foundation that's scalable and reliable uh, is, is, is uh, fundamental to our, to our future here. Along with that, though, we also have to transform how developers engage with our services and capabilities. As I mentioned in the past, um, automotive was um, a proprietary, locked down, complex world. And that uh, needs to change. And, and our platform is, uh, again, fueling this vision of opening up. We want to offer simple, uh, standards-based interfaces to our developers. Um, something that anybody that's familiar with web, mobile, cloud development today would be able to consume and, and combine with the things they're building in other contexts. That is the intent of the VWAC. And all of this then is wrapped in, in, in our uh, developer experience layer. 
um, which makes it possible for us to empower and enable our developers um, so that they can be productive quickly. It gives them the tools they need, access to a community of other developers, um, and um, uh, information about and documentation about our APIs and, and, and other um, supporting functions um, so that you can get started quickly. Again, we, what we want to do is take what's traditionally taken months, maybe even years, to develop um, in a very closed model um, uh, to a world where things can be built in days or weeks uh, in the future. That is, again, the intent of Volkswagen Automotive Cloud. And so, with that, uh, we've obviously uh, seen that this is a massive opportunity, and, and it requires investment. And uh, we are here today, we're here at this event this year, um, to make it very clear that, that Volkswagen, Carriot, um, are uh, investing to capture this opportunity, that we're ready um, to, to partner, and uh, we're, we're open for business, in effect. Um, we are uh, excited uh, to, to, to be here. We think it's an exciting time um, for you to, to join us here at, uh, at Carriot. And uh, we would love to be able to tell you a little bit more about, about what we're doing and share that secret handshake if you're interested. Um, uh, I'm happy to take some questions and Amon will come back on stage and answer all the hard ones. Uh, and uh, if, if not, we can of course see you um, after we close the presentation around the booth staff, we'll be happy to help.